Hi everyone, welcome to the channel, Brains and Beauty. I'm a PhD student studying brains and also a beauty lover, in particular makeup. Recently, I've been pretty busy with the PhD side, all really good stuff, but it's been a lot of work. Um, I've just submitted my first paper to be published, which it was a really big accomplishment, but it's been a lot of work. I basically spent all of September working on that paper. It was a bit exhausting, but it was also just exhilarating to know that you did the science, you discovered something, you made a new step forward, and you know, the entire field gets to read about it. It's just so cool. So yeah, it's been a lot of work, but all good stuff. But now I kind of am able to actually have some breaks in the evenings and you know, just have some time. And I, what I like to do with my time to you know unwind is play with makeup and make things. That's just my passion. So today's video is going to be another make it or buy it. The last video that I did was the Natasha Denona Make It or Buy It, and I'm so happy that a lot of you liked that one. Honestly, it just brings me so much joy to read the comments when people are as excited about this concept that I've created as I am. It's just, it's just amazing, so I'm really happy you guys like these. So I did actually put away um, the Natasha Denona Gold palette that I made. I put the shades that I made in this, so you can see the Merte palette that I made um, previously, these are the shadows I made, and now I added in the Natasha Nona Gold palette shadows that I made. The ones I didn't make, I put them back into my big palette. And so these are the shades that I made, um, and I had so much fun playing with this. I'll put up an eye look, especially the one that was like more glamorous. I used the mustard shade in my crease, and then the blues and the golds on the lid, and it was just so stunning. I really loved playing this month with the gold palette that I created. And now for today's video, what we're going to make is the Cinderella palette from Sigma. So if you're new to my channel, just like the quick spiel about what this concept is for the make it or buy it. Basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through my eyeshadow collection and see if I have any eyeshadows that exactly dupe the um, colors in the palette that I want. Right now is the Cinderella Sigma palette. And then if there are shades that I don't own, I'm going to actually try to make the shades by mixing eyeshadows that I already own in here to create the color that I want. So that way I'm using eyeshadows I already own, but kind of creating a new shade with them so that I can actually use up all the powders that I have before they expire. And also just, it's fun, you know, to see like, think about the color theory and mix things together and see if you can actually make the shade that you see in the palette. And then if I can't make the eyeshadows, you know, if there are a lot of eyeshadows I can't make or I played with a palette and I decide that like, okay, I actually really love this color story and I would like to purchase it, then I'd be making a more informed decision about my purchases. So I've already cleaned and sanitized these. And what we're going to do is we're going to get started with trying to see in my collection what do I already own that I could use. Oh, one more thing that I do want to say. I feel like I have to put this out there. I am definitely a Disney princess lover and recently I've been in a real like Cinderella kick. Like I really love the Cinderella aesthetic, the blues and the gold and everything, just so pretty. And um, actually the one little break that I did have in September, I went to my cousin's wedding and I wore the prettiest like blue dress. It like shifted from a vibrant blue to a silver or more like a silvery blue and then the sparkles were all like this super glittery silvery sparkles. I'll, I'll insert a little bit of a clip and you'll see how sparkly it is. It is so pretty. So I feel like me being drawn to Cinderella eyeshadow palette makes so much sense. I even actually already did a short on a kind of pastel Cinderella eye look and just to like additionally show you I have this. Is this not the cutest thing? <laughs> like, so I basically put my beauty blender in this little Cinderella carriage thing and it is just so cute. So yeah, I'm definitely a Cinderella lover and I will say if I were to make my own Cinderella palette, it would not look like this color story. But I do see the inspiration in this one and even though it's not the color story I would make, I still am drawn to it and I think it actually really works with the current trends right now. Like we're seeing a lot of palettes that are kind of like orange and then muted greens, navy blues, and plums. I feel like that's been such a trend this fall where every kind of eyeshadow palette looks like that and this one has a very nice condensed version of that. 
So I do want to make this, um, and so let's just get started. Okay, so let's first look at what shadows I already have. So for the photos that I'm going to reference, I'm going to look at the um, palette and the crush powders that Sigma has put up as a reference for their eyeshadow palette. I don't see any swatches from Sigma, so I'm just going to go with those two photos. And then in terms of swatches, I also didn't find much online, but I have found in some YouTube videos reviewing the palette. So I'm going to be looking at cat swatches and like close-ups of the palette from her video. I'll also link her video down below. And I might also refer to Amy from Amy Loves Makeup, her swatches as well. So those are kind of what I'm going to keep to because I know if I look at too much, it's, I'm just going to get confused. So we're going to stick with those. And I do feel like some of these will be really easy to just find in my collection. Like I know some of those neutrally orange shades and maybe even the plum like I feel like I have some of these colors so to spice up this video a little bit what I'm gonna do is for the shimmers I'm gonna mix in some multi-chromes I've never done this before I've never mixed a multi-chrome with like, an, like with anything <laughs> so this is gonna be a total experiment for our, both me and you and the reason why I'm doing this is while usually in these videos I focus on the color story because that's what most appeals to me I have noticed in a lot of review videos of this palette that everyone really talks about the um, like the texture of these. Even Cass said that it reminds her of like Pat McGrath special sparkly eyeshadows. So I really do want some of these eyeshadows to be super sparkly and the best way to do that is to like mix them with some of my Cleona shadows. So that is what we're going to be doing today. I'm so excited. I'm going to pick this shade as the really dark brown black shade. And this is from my True Naked CoverGirl palette. And then for the shade Wishful, so in the Sigma palette picture, it looks white, but then in the kind of powder, crushed up powder, it looks more like this champagne pink shade. So I'm going to look at the other pictures. Yeah, I feel like it's more of a champagne pink, like a really light champagne pink. So I'm thinking of this shade from the Urban Decay Heavy Metals palette. So let's see, let me swatch it. So here's Angel Fire. Yeah, I feel like Angel Fire is literally an exact dupe. And again, in case you're new to my channel, maybe now it's kind of obvious, but what all of these shades are, are basically samples that I took. I just scraped the top surface of every eyeshadow in my eyeshadow collection, including eyeshadow palettes so that I could use them as singles to build these kinds of palettes. So this is the shade from, this was the Urban Decay Heavy Metals palette that I just swatched from, and this is the Angel shade. So I'm just going to put it right here. Okay, so next we have the shade Pumpkin. I feel like I have a couple contenders for this. So let me see, I'm thinking of some of the oranges that I have. There's like this orange. This orange feels a little too orange. I think it's more muted like this. Let me see here. This orange also feels too rich to be pumpkin. This could be the shade Cinders. So let me swatch all of them. So I'll swatch the oranges that I have. So first let's start with this first top row, which is the Wet n Wild Rose in the Air palette really pretty orange shade and then the other palette is also wet and wild and it's the comfort zone the new one okay and then what else did I say all right so the smashbox lace palette okay when I'm looking at Amy's swatches this orange does look that light even though in the pan it doesn't look this light but I guess you could also see like in the pan it looks darker than in the swatch, so that kind of mimics exactly how the Sigma orange looks like for pumpkin. Then when I'm looking at Kat's version of the palette, it's almost like these oranges look more brown. Hmm. Okay, I think these are shades that I'm going to actually adjust a little bit. I know it might not look that different on the eyes, but this is kind of what I like doing with these Naked or Buy It's. I really am trying to get as close as possible to the shade. So I think what I'm going to do is mix a bit of brown into this shade and mix a bit of brown into this shade. I feel like this one is just a little too red. Like it does look orange, like a, but I guess more like a rusty red orange. 
whereas these two actually look like they're oranges. So I just need to add a bit of brown for those two. I'll plop them in for now just so that we know, but um, I'm going to lightly take them out and then put in shades that I actually make after. Okay, so now for the shade Dressmakers. I feel like it's a orangey gold shade. I'm kind of leaning towards Half Baked from Urban Decay. Let's also see what this shadow looks like from the Urban Decay Heavy Metals palette. So that's the color Maiden. Okay, I actually think that's really close. Yeah, looking at Cat swatches and Amy swatches, this is a literal dupe of that shade. Okay, I'm going to put this in. <laughs> I feel like I'm getting a lot of my colors just from the Urban Decay palette, but it's been working out. Like, I even feel like Fantasy looks a lot like this shade. Maybe mixed with this shade. I feel like these two together look a lot like Fantasy. So let's swatch them. Yeah, do you see how much this looks like Fantasy? This one's a little bit more pink. Okay, yeah, I feel like the shade Fantasy is a mix of these two. And then there it is again. This time with the more pinky shade on top. So that's how that looks like. And then, I want to put from Cleona, which is like this kind of shade. This is so perfect for Cinderella, like, because it has the same kind of base as Fantasy, but it also has this blue shift to it and blue sparkle. So, that is what our shadow for Fantasy is going to look like once I mix it all together. I'm so excited to make that one. Okay, so this is like the warm tone side of the palette. Now let's see if I can find anything for the cool tone side. So I do know for Hopeful, I'm actually going to use the shade I already made for the Melt Merte palette. So I'm thinking of going for this blue matte shade. For the uh, shade Courtyard, I know I don't have anything like that. In terms of the shade Sweet Nightingale, I that's literally the shade... Um, CL from Cleona. So this shade right here, I feel like is basically identical to that shade. So I'm just going to um, sample a little bit of this and press it into one of these 15 millimeter pans so that it can just, you know, look uniform with this palette. But yeah, this is a really pretty blue that really represents Cinderella and has just the softest gold shift to it. Okay, so I'll leave that for when I do the shimmers, and then anything else that I can just grab. Okay, I feel like for the true gold shade, I have this from Urban Decay. But I am going to do something special with it, so you know what, I'm going to not add that in. And then the only other thing that I can think of, like I don't have, you know the shade one of a kind? It looks like it's just a sparkly blue, like iridescent shade, which I do have, um, which would be Glow from Cleona. But when I was watching Amy's video, she kind of said that it had a green base with a purpley lilac shift. So I'm going to have to make that or try my best to make that. That one's like really hard. That's probably going to be the hardest one to make, but we'll see how, it, how I do. Um, but yeah, I'm going to have to make that shade. And then the shade Kindness, I don't have that kind of purple. I feel like this is the closest thing, but maybe this is still a bit too warm. Let's see what that one looks like. Yeah, I feel like this is a bit warm. Like this does match the crushed up powder, but I think just a little bit more purple. So for this one, probably all I will do is just like mix this with this kind of pur purple cool tone shade. So I'm going to need to make that one as well. Let's see. And then the purple shade I will make as well. I'm thinking of mixing this one with some Cleona shades. I guess all that's left is just the plum to decide whether I'll, I'll just grab something from my collection or make it. So let me swatch out the plums that I do have. So I'm thinking of these two. So those are from the Sultry palette by Smashbox. So it would be these two shades. I 
feel like in the pan it looks more like this shade. It's swatched out. Let me see how it looks swatched. Okay, I'm looking at Amy's swatches and I feel like this one is closer. It's like this plummy shade. I mean, they actually both kind of... It almost looks like it's a mixture of these two. I think it is a mix between these two. It's almost like not as purpley as this, but not as brown as this one. It's like right in between. So I guess I'm mixing that shade as well. Okay. So it turns out we are doing a lot of mixing in this <laughs> video. Let's start with the two oranges just so that I don't forget. And it seems like only three shadows, I'm going to keep them as they are. So this one, this one, this one, and the blue. So the oranges, let's make them um, a bit more brown. And then we'll continue to work through the mattes, and then we'll do the shimmers. I'm going to take the orange from this palette and the orange from this palette. And then I'm going to take the brown and add just a little bit of it at a time in order to make those oranges a little bit deeper and a little bit more brown. Okay, so that was the shade I had originally, and this is the shade I have now. I feel like, yep, that exactly did it. This is what I see when I look at cat swatches, and this is what I see when I look at the palette in general. Alright, so I'm going to scoop this shade up and press it in a pan. Okay, so now I'm going to do the same thing with the other richer orangey shade, so mixing this with the brown. Um, and I'm not going to really clean out this because it's basically the same undertone. It's just richer, and I don't think that this will really influence um, anything. So I'm just going to start mixing right over top here. Is perfect it just needs to be a little bit darker so I'm gonna add a bit more of that dark brown See, this looks like cat swatch now, like it's a it's a deeper brown, but I feel like we lost the undertone that's more orangey. Mm. Like in Amy swatches, you can see the orange undertone. I think I'm going to add just a little bit more of the orange now. Okay, I don't know if you can see the difference on camera, but I do feel like this one has the orange undertone again. And I think this is probably the closest 
I can get it to that shade because it's a bit confusing whether that shade is supposed to be lighter or darker depending on whose swatches I'm looking at but I'm pretty sure this is really close to what is the shade in the palette so I'm gonna go with this shade So everything's been cleared out and next I'm going to make the courtyard shade. This is kind of this muted sage green so what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix some of this NYX green shade with the yellow and some white and some black. So this is a really pretty forest green, but we want it to be more of a sage, so I'm going to add even more yellow and then some white. Oh my gosh, look how gorgeous this sage green matte shade is. So pretty. I think this shadow is identical to what I'm seeing in Amy's swatches and in the palette itself. It's a really pretty sage green kind of shade. Okay, so I'm going to scoop this up and press it. Listen, I don't think I'm a perfectionist, but I do try my best, and I think when I put this in, I feel like the green in the palette has a bit more blue to it, like just a touch of blue to it. Okay, so I'm going to scoop it back out and back into here. Okay, take two, just a little bit of blue. Maybe I can go with a little bit of teal, like the smallest touch of this. Okay, we're definitely moving in the right direction. I'm going to add just a touch more of the blue. I know that might seem like it made just the tiniest bit of difference, but I do see the blue now more. It's not as much of a yellowy green, so like it's like a sage 
and a cactus and kind of green <laughs> mixed together, but yeah. This one does look much closer. I'm kind of just looking at it, so I, I pressed it a little bit against the wall with my spatula just to see, because sometimes you see it better when it's pressed. Let me just look at it next to the other shades. Yeah, I honestly feel like this is good. Maybe I could go a bit darker, but I kind of like it where it is. I don't feel like I need to go darker with it. So, take two for scraping and pressing. Okay, so that green shade was quite a challenge. It's definitely got more of a like, blue undertone than I thought it did when I was first making it. But I think that makes sense because it really will go well with like the blues that are going to be down here. So now let's move on to the purple shades. I'm going to start with the plummy purple on the side, which as we discussed before is going to be made by mixing these two shades. You can barely tell the difference between these two shades, but when they mix together, they're going to make the shade that we see in the palette. I feel like it's a little bit more brown than this. Like, we're really close, but... Maybe just a bit more of that kind of brown-purple shade. Maybe even just a touch of that brown shade. I feel like that's a lot closer, especially given um, Amy's swatch and what it looks like in the palettes. So I'm going to see what it looks like pressed. Just look at that color, it's so nice. Okay, so that's the color I made. And honestly, I think it looks pretty much identical to what's in the palette. It's a really pretty plum shade. Okay, so for this purple, I actually debated a little bit if I even want to make this shade or just put in a purple that I would want because I honestly don't like warm purples. It's something that I tend to kind of avoid when it comes to eyeshadow and I don't avoid any other color. It's just like warm purples that in my head always make me feel like Barney. <laughs> so I don't, I don't go near those. So you know what, I think actually this is another benefit of making an eyeshadow myself, especially a specific color, because it's a good way for me to just try it out and see if I actually do like it when I've only made a small quantity of it and then I don't have to feel the kind of burden of, oh, I, I got so much of this powder and it's going to take me so long to use it up, um, especially if it's a color that I don't like. So I'm going to make it, you know, it's a small quantity and I do kind of want to see if maybe I'll end up liking this shade. So to make this shade in the palette, I was thinking of using this purple from the Huda Beauty palette. Honestly, that's really close already, but I think the one in the Sigma um, palette is just a bit more cool toned. So I want to mix it with this shade. So I'm just going to swatch it beside it right now, just so that you can kind of see both of them. Yeah, I really think it's going to be a mix of these two shades, so let me try layering them. So that's what they look like mixed. So let's try this out.
yeah so this is the shade that I just made over here um, by mixing these two so I feel like this is pretty much the shade and I honestly think it's so pretty like <laughs> I know I just said I don't like warm purples but I'm looking at this and I'm like wow it's really pretty especially like with this darker vampy plum look at those together they're so nice okay I'm really happy I made the shade I might Mix a little bit more just so there's enough to press, and then I'll press it. So pretty! Ah. <laughs> okay. So, all of our mats are done. I honestly am so happy with these. They look perfect. I'm so excited. Oh my gosh. Okay, okay. So, these are the gorgeous mats. Now let's do the shimmers. Next is the shade Fantasy. I already showed you guys what I have planned to do to mix this one, so let's just get right into it. I, I am so excited. I've never mixed a multi-chrome into any shimmer, so I'm really excited to see what comes from this. This is the shade that I've created. I feel like the multichrome kind of got lost in it, but I am seeing a soft shift. It's just that I'm not seeing the sparkle, I guess. So I feel like there's a very clear kind of sparkle, and I don't see that in the shade that I've created. I wonder if I just put in too much of the base color. I feel like I want to add another multi-chrome, so it's through the shade carving. So I want to see if maybe this one will add some more sparkle. I can give it a swatch just so you guys can see. So I'm going to add this one. It has a bit of a lighter base to it, but the same kind of shift. really do it <laughs> okay all right so I think what I have learned with this process like it's still shiny it's a pretty eyeshadow it's like a shiny purpley pink kind of shade and I definitely can still use it as a shimmer shade in the palette but it's not giving me the sparkle that the Cleona shadows typically have and what I think was the reason is because I just added too much of those other two normal shimmers. So I think the next time I try to mix a multi-chrome with one of my regular eyeshadow, shimmer eyeshadows, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to start off with the multi-chrome and then slowly add in the other pigment. And then we'll see what we'll do. Actually, we'll try that with the next shade that I'm going to do. So for the shade one of a kind, I am planning to mix a normal shimmer with an iridescent multi-chrome. Now, iridescents don't have bases, so that will also be different than what I just did here. So we'll see how that goes. But for this experiment, it was a fail. <laughs> you can't get the sparkle. Um, yeah, that was the conclusion. But I still got the shade that is in the palette, so I'm still going to press it and use this eyeshadow. It just doesn't have that sparkle. Um, or anything really special to it the way I wanted it to. Let's try the iridescent shade. So for the shade, one of a kind. It looks in the pan as if it's just like a silvery blue shade, but when Amy was watching it, she also said that it looked like it was a green base with a purple lilac-y shift. I don't have a lilac iridescent, 
but I do have Glow from Cleona Cosmetics, which is more of a blue to purple kind of shade. I still think it fits the theme, so I do want to try with this one to make the shade. So what I'm going to try to do is make a green base with this kind of blue to purple shift. So hopefully you can see the blue and the purple that's in there. Let me shield it a bit so you can see the purple. Okay, do you see the purple there? So it's blue and then it's purple. So I'm thinking of basically mixing this with a green shimmer. I think it's when she says green, it's more of a kind of gray green. Because when I look at the swatches, that's kind of what I see as well. It's more of a gray kind of green base. So I'm thinking of using this shadow from Huda and then topping it with this one. And I think that's going to give a really close effect to what's in the palette. So that is the beautiful gray green shade. And then let's just top glow on top of it to see. So that's what glow would look like when it has a blue shift and when it has the purple shift. Okay, there you go. So that's with the purple shift. I think that's really close to what we're seeing in the pictures and the swatches. But the real question is if I mix those two, will it actually make it look the way it looks when I just layer them? Or it, will it just kind of make the multi-chrome disappear the way it did with the other shade? So I'm going to take my own advice and start off with glow and then just add a teeny, 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 teeny bit of the green shade. And hopefully it doesn't completely mask this shade. Okay, this is really pretty shade. I think it's the moment of truth. Let me see if we created the shade though. Ooh, that really pulls out the purple. I mean, you guys can't see the purple right now, but it hasn't covered the iridescent shade. I honestly put such a small amount because I was so scared. So I'm going to put a little bit more and we're going to still see how much more I can put in order to see the base without it covering the iridescent. You know what I take as a really good sign? I can still see that really strong shift even when the space is getting darker with the green. I think that's a good sign. And it won't completely cover up the iridescence. So that is the shade that I've made compared to what Glow was originally. When I can really see the purple here. Okay, so this one's definitely more of a success. Like I can definitely see the green base to it. And then I can see the blue shift. Just as strong as it was alone. So you see the blue. And then do you see the lavender now? Over the green. It's so pretty. Blue, lavender. And they're both on top of this kind of gorgeous silvery green shade. Oh, do you see the purple there? Oh my gosh, look how pretty that is! <laughs> I'm so glad I was finally able to capture it. Look at that purple, like lilac -y purple over the green. It's so pretty. Yeah, I would have never thought to like make this shade on my own. So I'm really happy like with, I always keep up with these new releases because they're so inspiring. It's just so pretty. I am thinking of getting some purple green multi-chromes, like actually buying some single shadows. They're already on my wish list. 
planning to buy them, but this is really, really fun to make and to see that I could make this. I honestly did not feel like the base dulled the iridescent multichrome at all, which is really cool. Like, this just opens so many doors to be able to make so many different eyeshadows. Really, really exciting. But we definitely learned to start with the multi-chrome and then slowly add in the color. I don't know if that is the solution to the other shade or if it's because there's already a base to the shade um, Grisaille and Carving that I used. It's possible that because there was already the base, it just would not, it was just too much to add in other shimmers without adding in more of the sparkle, like the ratio was just too much. Anyway, that was, that was really fun experiment. But yeah, let's press the shade. Okay, I will say though, it pressed, seeing, you're seeing blue, which does not look like the one in Sigma palette, that one looks purple, but this one shows blue and purple. So for that shade, I'm not doing any mixing actually, I'm just literally scooping out and sampling some of the eyeshadow. left is so we have this kind of really gorgeous cool toned purple kind of shimmer so i know for this purpley shade i want to use the cleona shade enamel so again you guys are seeing it in more of a blue kind of shift to it and i'm seeing it as a pink shift this is pink blue pink blue <laughs> So with that really pretty kind of purpley base. But it kind of looks like the one in the palette has more of a deeper purpley shade. So I'm thinking I could either go with this shade or this shade. Probably this shade just because this one looks like it's a little too warm toned. Do you guys feel like that? I feel like that. So let me swatch out the deeper cool tone one. Okay, I'm going to take another swatch of that one. And then let's try to layer with this shade. Yeah, oh my gosh, that looks so close to the pictures. Yeah, that looks like really, really close with the pictures of like the swatches that I'm seeing. Okay, so I guess this is like a trial number two of <laughs> what we did before. Because this is the same thing, the way the Grisai was a glitter multichrome, it had a base to it. Like this has a purple base, that one had a more reddish maroonish base. This one has a purple base and I'm mixing it with a shimmer. So let's see, if I go really slowly, I start off with the multichrome, I add in the other base, if we'll lose our sparkle and shift or if it'll stay. So I'm just using the other side. So we're going to start off with the tiniest bit. Just that much. Oh my gosh, it worked! It worked! <laughs> I didn't believe it would. Okay, 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 we're getting somewhere. So this, I think you can definitely tell. See when I tilt it like this, it's much deeper than the original shade. And it's looking like this one that I created. It still has the shift to it. So you can see that vibrant blue. If anything, the blue looks even more vibrant, probably because the base is deeper now. And then it also has the purple, blue to purple. Hmm. Okay. I'm going to add the tiniest bit. Okay, that is it. That is perfect. It still has the same shine. It has the deep base. Like this one. Yep, that's it. Okay, I'm going to go with this shade. Yeah, I don't feel like I lost any of this shine or color. I hope it's translating on camera, but in real life I see that, no, nope, I didn't leave, lose any of the shine or shift. Okay, I'm going to press this. Okay. 
Okay, so we're almost done with the palette. Oh my gosh, it's looking amazing. Let me take these out. Now, I did leave this last shade. I know what you're thinking, Rima, that's just like a basic gold. You don't need to make a gold. <laughs> and you're right, I do have this gold here. So from the Urban Decay Heavy Metals palette, I do have this true gold. So I could throw that in, and there we go, we've made the palette. I did want to leave it to the end because I was still debating, like, one of the reasons why I, I was hesitant to get this palette is because I didn't want that gold shade. <laughs> I was just kind of like, I already have a true gold, and it's kind of boring to just have a gold. And what I thought I would do at the end is maybe make the shade that I would have made for this palette. But I think what I'm going to do is just stick with the gold because there's already a lot of special shades in this palette and I am trying to make the palette itself and not go too far off. Like I was, just as I was washing my hands, I looked at this green shade and it was so stunning. Like I can't wait to put that on my lids and to put this green shade, like this greeny blue shade all over my crease. It's gonna be such a pretty look. And then you know what I do like about having the orange here? There's this one scene in Cinderella that's kind of like, um, she's dancing and there's this like warm background. It's like a purpley orange kind of background. I would love to recreate that scene, like with eyeshadows using like the purples to the orange. I think I might do that. That would be a really pretty eye look. So I am excited to play with this palette. I think I've honestly captured exactly what it is. This is supposed to look more lilac, but you guys know at a different angle it does. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to organize some things. Okay, there we go. That is the Cinderella Sigma palette. I hope you enjoyed watching the video, seeing all the swatches, and even the little experiments that we did. Honestly, I feel like I've learned so much just figuring all of that out and seeing how to mix multichromes into shadows. I think it's really exciting to be able to do that because it means that so many of my other shimmers that are kind of going to the wayside because they're kind of boring compared to the new multichromes that I'm getting. I can now spice them up by adding some multichrome to them, so that's really fun. And yeah, I, I really enjoyed this. I hope you guys did as well. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know if this is the kind of Cinderella palette that you would have made. If this is like literally your perfect color story or if you, have, if you would have done something different. Um, but yeah, that's it. I hope you enjoyed the make it or buy it. I guess I should say at the end if I'm gonna buy it or not. I think it's kind of obvious. <laughs> I'm not gonna I'm not gonna buy the Cinderella palette because I literally made those shades. Like they, they are right here. I love making these types of videos for my make it or buy it series and all other types of videos related to makeup, whether it's just being more um, conscious consumers or being creative with our collections. That's kind of my vibe. So if you like the video, please give it a like. And if you want to see more, please subscribe. And that's it. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.